Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Really glad to have this young lady on. Her name is uh, Denisha Merriweather. She, you might remember that she was called out by the president, then President Trump, at the State of the Union address for doing so well with her life. She's now the director of public relations and content marketing for American Federation for Children and also the founder of Black Minds Matter. Denisha, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me, Joe. Congratulations. The most titles anybody's had on my show this week. That's a lot of titles that you go by, but that's wonderful. You're do- That just means you're doing a lot, aren't you? Doing a lot. That's very, I maximize every day. I'm a whole lot older than you are, but I want to I wanna take you back to the early 1990s or mid-1990s. The big deal in our country was Ebonics. And the reason I bring that up is that people were confused by what Ebonics was being used for. They thought they were teaching sort of um, ebony phonics in, in schools. They weren't. They were utilizing it to teach young black kids who were growing up with a different sensibility about the English language. They were teaching them the correct English by using ebonics that they might have heard at home or growing up. I thought that it was a good thing because we weren't failing black students in school. Your point today is we are failing black students. I mean, this is 25 years later, and suddenly we're leaving them behind, and instead of teaching reading, writing, arithmetic, we're teaching wokeism and white supremacy and pronouns. Fill me in on, uh, did I get that right? That's, that's what you're worried about, right? You know, the American education system has not done well by black students since its inception. And so one of the things that I like to champion for, especially with Black Minds Matter, is that if the if the government school system is not going to educate black students, then we definitely need to give them a choice to attend a private school, a charter school, a home school, or something other than their assigned government school, because right. the government is not doing a good job at doing that. And especially during the time that we're and now when a lot of people are looking at curriculum. You know, one of the things that COVID did was to expose curriculum for parents. They saw their kids sitting in front of a TV screen, sitting in front of the computer, not learning. The teachers were basically just babysitters and they began to ask some really important questions. And now since COVID, a lot of parents are not just taking what the media or what education systems, what the district is just telling them. They're demanding more and they're demanding choices in education for their kids. I'm going to be not as nice as you were. The education system is failing black kids big time. Uh, it's yeah. failing It's failing them by passing them when they didn't pass. Uh, there are many who are getting through elementary school, middle school, even high school, getting, getting a diploma who still are behind other ethnicities, other demographics when it comes to reading, writing, and arithmetic. And we're setting them up basically for failure. But here's the confusing part. The left that, that says it's looking out for minorities really isn't because the left is the side that's against school choice. School choice would exponentially help poor and crime-ridden neighborhoods better, poor uh, performing school neighborhoods better than rich neighborhoods where the rich people can already send their kids to private school, right? Joe, you're exactly right. I mean, we have these statistics nationwide that show 15 out of 100 black students are reading on grade level, 13 are doing math on grade level, 13 out of 100 are doing math on grade level. And civics, nine out of 100 know perform civics on grade level. So we have an issue here. And we also have the studies to show that when school choice is included in that conversation, all of these negative statistics change. Students who participated in Florida on the Florida Tax Credit Scholarship Program not only graduated from high school, but went to college and graduated from college at higher rates than their public school counterparts. Harvard and Yale also found that black students who attended a charter school were 100 times less likely to end up in jail. And so we have all of these studies that show that school choice, especially in the black community, helps them to graduate and live productive lives. The public education system, sorry, but they don't have those same positive results when it comes to educating black students. And so just like you said, they deserve a choice in education. And me personally, I definitely, um, since the the studies show that the, the public education system don't know how to teach reading, don't know how to teach math, how do we expect for them to teach lessons talking about human dignity right. and human decency and culture. You know, how do we expect for them to teach on those subjects when they can't get the basics right? 
It's a, it's a perfect point. It's Denisha Merriweather. Go follow her. D-E-N-I-S-H-A. Merriweather, M-E-R-R-I, uh, then weather, like the weather outside. Go and follow her right now because what she's saying is verifiably true. You brought something up earlier about how this, this doing school over the internet, that really did expose what the curriculum was. The curriculum what really was a bunch of babysitters that were passing kids to keep the funding coming in. The kids don't pass, you don't get the funding. If the kids don't go to that school, you don't get the funding. It was so e- e- explosive that in Boston, in some areas of Massachusetts, the teachers wanted there to be a law passed that, that parents couldn't watch. I mean, they really didn't want the parents to sit there in their own homes, watching their kids do their studies because it was exposing the lackluster way that they were educating. I mean, they literally said, well, this is for privacy reasons. We shouldn't allow parents to watch. That's certifiably nuts. I mean, Denisha, we're paying for that education. They didn't want us to see it. So, I mean, so what you said is verifiably true. Let me throw this one out there as well. When it comes to what you just said about 9% no civics, 13% no math, 14 or whatever it was, 15% no uh, the other subject, when, when it comes to that, nobody's talking about it. So why aren't there more voices, like the really loud voices, like Black Lives Matter? Why isn't Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson? Why aren't they out there saying, hey, black kids are not learning in school and we're setting them up for failure once they get out? Why do you think they're not talking about it? You know, if the... I don't know why they're not talking about it. It's not, you know, top secret news. If right. you pick back the cover at least a little bit, you will see how the education system, how the public education system has been just completely terrible for for black minds. Um, and then you have this facade of morality when they, you know, champion the teachers union, they champion for Black Lives Matter and they say, oh, we don't want black bodies to be killed at the hands of police. And it's like, but you're killing black minds every day in the education system. And you're not going to tell me how these how these black men got into the positions that they are now. Like, right. we're not going to have that conversation. But, you know, I like to I'm always very hopeful. There is a wonderful guy, Rashad Turner, out of um, Mass- uh, Minnesota, and he founded the BLM chapter in Minnesota. And he stepped down as founder of the BLM chapter because he saw that they did not value the things that he thought they weren't actually uplifting the black community. And I can't speak for all chapters. I can't speak. I believe the social movement is very different from the political movement of BLM. However, the case for Black Minds Matter needs to be made. And so I'm happy to be a voice in the in this in this space because we need to take a look at the education system. And I I like to wager that if any system in America is racist, it's the public education system because it's just constantly fed out so many dismal results right. for black students. Federationforchildren.org is the website, federationforchildren.org. Her name is Denisha Merriweather. You know, the things that you're saying really do come together very nicely. If you think about it, black students are failing so much more than other demographics, yet they're being taught critical race theory. Critical race theory is the theory that white people even made up the, the idea, the mechanisms of race, just to oppress everybody. So black kids are being taught, you're failing, not because we suck as a system or not because we're failing you as the taxpayer funded you know way for you to learn no it's because white people don't like you and white supremacy and oppression and 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 slavery and and so on and so forth how do we defeat that we know that used as a political tool to control minds and to control uh, the population once they get out if people are not productive and can't get out of school and do something beneficial in they'll be dependent on the government therefore they're going to vote for the government forever so how do we teach people that CRT is fake, it's made up, it's not, it's not what's going to get you to a good home and, and a great family when you get older? How do, how do we disabuse them of what they're being fed every single day in school? Well, I think the most powerful way to diffuse a conversation that parents don't agree with is to give them the opportunity to choose the school that they want to go to. Yes. A lot of parents are frustrated right now with things that are going on in the public education system and the the, the best weapon that we can give them is their tax dollars to up and go to a different school that they want their kids to be educated in. And if the if the uh, teachers union is not willing to have that conversation, you know, we need this army of parents to gear up and say those same words. I don't agree. I want to send my kids somewhere else. At the American Federation for Children, we don't believe and support any type of ca- curriculum. We're not involved in those conversations. Right. We 
want parents to have the choice where they send their kid. And if something is upsetting the parent, they definitely should have the opportunity to go to a different school. And I, I believe that a lot of parents during this time will change schools if they had that opportunity because of the conversations that are happening today. Well, school choice works. It worked in Washington, D.C. That's why they had to try to stop it. It's worked in Florida, certainly. Um, at the end of the day, though, you've got a very, very powerful lobby in the teachers union. The teachers union has the ear of the current president, the vice president, the administration, and they're going to always side with the teachers unions because they believe the teachers gave them power by voting for them and pushing others to vote for them. So how do we convince people that school choice is the right way to go? The message, the messaging from the left is school choice benefits the rich, school choice benefits Republicans, school choice benefits conservatives, when of course it's the opposite. School choice, as we said earlier, which is true, benefits the, the lower income areas, the higher crime areas exponentially more than anybody else. How do we convince them other than conversations like you and I are having? Is it about parents going to school boards? Is it about just telling the truth? How do we do it? Well, we have the polling to suggest that parents want this as it relates to black families. Black parents, yeah. 76% of black voters want school choice. Only 22 out of the voter base said that they would prefer to send their kid to their assigned government school. Everyone else wants school choice. We also saw, you know, case study in Florida where Andrew Gillum and Governor DeSantis went neck and neck with one another. You have a white Republican and a black Democrat who had who had support from every known celebrity, it seemed, in yeah. the country. And black mothers voted for Ron DeSantis because of his stance on school choice. They want school choice. And so we have the data and the polling to suggest that parents want it. And we don't need for uh, especially Democrats to cower away from this issue and to just lay in bed with the teachers union. They should support their constituents because their constituents will support and vote for them. You know, what you said about DeSantis and Gillum, nobody's talking about that. Nobody's talking about how black mothers came out for for Ron DeSantis. I'm glad that you just said it because we've got a lot of stations in Florida and people should know that that we do know exactly the way that they're leaning when it comes to school choice. We should do what the parents want. Why? Because the parents are the ones paying the bill. It, it, they, we should always have had a say. We've been convinced, though, that we, yeah, we have to pay the money, but we have no say. We do. Uh, I appreciate you more than you know, Denisha. Denisha, uh, Denisha Merriweather, she's the Director of Public Relations and Content Marketing. Marketing, American Federation for Children, and also the founder of Black Minds Matter. Go to, Ameri- uh, actually, it's federationforchildren.org. Check out uh, what she does and what that organization does. Go follow her on Twitter and the other social media. Can we do it a lot more? I want you back. Let's do it, Joe. Okay, Denisha, thanks a million. We're back after this. Stay right here.